Hello, I'm Lake County Board Member Dick Barr, representing the 3rd District of Lake County, and that's you in Lindenhurst, Lake Villa, Round Lake Beach, and Round Lake Heights. On this video, we're going to be talking about how to file for exemptions online. <music> Welcome back. Again, I'm Dick Barr, Lake County Board Member for District 3, which is Lindenhurst, Lake Villa, Round Lake Beach, and Round Lake Heights. On my last video, I had uh, many people ask me if we can show you how to go ahead and file for property tax exemptions in an effort to lower your property tax burden. Um, so by all means, that's what we're going to do today. Um, first, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, what a property tax exemption is. Um, in uh, Illinois, uh, property taxes are paid based on the value of your home. Um, the Illinois statute has a formula that says your assessed value is equal to one third of your fair market value. Using round numbers, let's say your house is worth $180,000 on the uh, fair market, then your assessed value would be one third of that or $60,000. A property tax exemption is a reduction in the value of your home of its equalized assessed value. So that $60,000, then we would subtract your property tax exemption. A homeowner's tax exemption is $6,000. So instead of $60,000, your assessed value for the purposes of taxes would be $54,000. So $60,000 minus $6,000 and therefore $54,000. So the more exemptions you qualify for, the uh, lower your tax bill will be. So on the screen here, we have a uh, example property tax bill. Um, and we're going to zoom in to the bottom right hand corner of this bill. And you can see this box in the middle where it says $6,000. Well, that there is the list of property tax exemptions on your tax bill. Uh, you see you've got a general homestead exemption, a senior citizen homestead exemption, a senior freeze, re returning veterans, disabled or disabled veterans, and a natural, natural disaster exemption. Uh, these are all different exemptions that you may or may not qualify for, and I'm going to show you how to apply for them uh, using the online portal. Uh, new in uh, Lake County this year, uh, our software now allows residents to file their um, exemptions online instead of going to the township assessor or the chief county assessor's office. So let's open up a browser window and first thing we're going to do is open up a web browser and what I've done to try to make this as easy as possible for you is on my website I've got links to um, all the applications uh, in one place so you can easily find them uh, whenever you're looking. So to get to my website, you would go to www.dickbarlakecounty.com. And again, that's www dick bar that's d-i-c-k-b-a-r-r lakecounty.com and there it goes now it's loading so on the web page across the menu bar along the top you'll see different menu items and right in the middle is a menu item called property tax now i've compiled compiled a bunch of different property tax um, issues here and feel free to take a look at this and uh, see which ones are useful to you but we're looking for the Lake County online property tax exemption application we click on that link and it's going to take you to that page now at the top of the page uh, I've put the phone numbers for all of the township assessors in each of the townships um, in District 3 that includes Lake Villa Avon and Antioch if you scroll down the page, you'll see here there's um, these minus signs and plus signs. Uh, to, to go into any one of these categories, just click on the plus sign. 
and there'll be a description of what that application is for. But we're going to be focused on the homestead exemption form, which includes the senior homestead, the revert, returning veterans, the disabled veterans, and the disabled persons homestead exemptions. Now, keep in mind that these are for first time applications only. For renewals, we would have gone to the next grouping. And these are for renewals for some of those exemptions. But we're going to look at first time applications. We click on the link in the drop down. And this is going to take us straight to the Lake County portal to file an application. Now, um, we're going to click begin filing. Now, I already have an account set up, so I'm not going to walk you through setting up an account. Um, if you don't have an account yet, which you probably don't, uh, you're going to click on the new user create an account and just follow the, um, um, the commands. It'll ask you for some personal information, your name, address, phone number, email, and ask you to set up a password. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, um, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Chief County Assessor's Office or your local township assessor, or you could also contact me and I'll be happy to help or at least get you in touch with someone that can help you. But since I already have an account, I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And on here, what um, you, we, uh, you've got, you've got, if you happen to know your parcel identification number, you can enter that here for the property you're going to file an exemption for. Um, your parcel number can be found on your tax bill or your blue card uh, that comes every year. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just paste a, a generic parcel identification number for a vacant lot in town just so it doesn't pull up anyone's personal information. And I'm going to go ahead and click search and then I'm going to click start filing. Now it's going to ask you some basic questions. Question one, do you live in your home as your principal residence on January 1st of the tax year? Now remember, the tax year is the tax year you're filing for. If I'm filing for 2019, um, then I would have to have lived in the home on uh, January 1st of 2019. But remember, since Illinois pays our taxes in arrears, which means we pay in 2019 for 2018 taxes, uh, a lot of the questions will be geared towards last year and not this year. Anything you file for this year won't count until 2020. Um, so I'm going to say yes. And there's a question that pops up is if you've lived in this address that we're talking about less than two years, they want to know your previous address. And then it asks some other questions to see if you qualify for further exemptions. Are you a disabled veteran with an overall service-connected disability with 30% or greater? I'm a no. Is this the only property you're applying for? Yes. And for all questions that I've answered yes to, is the same applicable for 2018? We talked about this before. Uh, in my situation, the answer would be yes. Then scroll down and click on the next button. Okay, so here's what it's asking. It's looking for... So, so this is a bad example because it knows that this is a vacant lot and it knows there's no home on the property. So typically what would have happened is uh, in this first question where it said general homestead exemption in this middle column where it currently says no improvement on property, there would have been a checkbox just like the one down here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check that box just so you can see the process. Uh, and then you're going to choose who the qualifying owner is. Now in, in um, my case, it would have been me. Um, my name would be here, but I'm going to choose the name there. And then I'm going to go ahead and click next. That's what you would do. And also for any of the other exemptions um, that you were uh, working on would be the same below. And then it's going to ask some basic um, personal information. What's your marital status? Um, what's your spouse's name? Is the property owned in a trust? 
Um, what is the tenancy of the property? Is it joint tenancy, uh, tenants in common? Uh, in Illinois, the most common form of ownership is joint tenancy when there's a um, more than one owner. Um, but if you have any questions, you would contact uh, your attorney or you might contact the Chief County Assess Assessor's Office for, uh, for help with that question. Um, and once you've answered all these questions, you're going to click Next. Now it's warning me now that I haven't finished this form, so uh, it gives me the option to uh, fix this now or fix it later. But since I won't be going through with this application, obviously, I'm just going to tell it I'm going to fix it later. So then it asks you some um, more qualifying questions. Now this one is asking for the veterans with disabilities. If you remember on that screen, this was the only one it allowed us to choose because there was no home on the property. Um, but if you were filing for a general homestead exemption, um, you wouldn't have these questions. These are specific to the exemption that you're qualifying for. And I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and I'll fix this later. The next page that comes up is the uh, Attachments page. So um, you're going to have to supply some supporting documentation, um, and then you've got the ability to scan them in or take a photo of these documents to be able to provide to the county so they can uh, confirm you are who you say you are and that you are the owner of that property. Uh, the first question would be the government ID. You would click Select Files. And that would open up a browser, um, a file browser on your computer, and you'd be able to select the file that it's asking for. Um, if you're a senior and you're in a lease where you're responsible for paying the property taxes in addition to your lease, you could also file for a property tax exemption, but you would have to upload your lease uh, into this section um, that, that shows that you are the responsible payer of the property taxes. If this is for a disability, you'll be asked for proof of disability. Any other supporting documentation that uh, you need or that the requirements, um, excuse me, the, uh, the requirements uh, allow. And then if there's a trust, any trust documentation. So if the property is owned in trust and not in uh, personal names, you would attach that there. Go ahead and click Next. And once you've done all that, it takes you to the Submit page and you click Submit, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to cancel filing. And I'm sure I do want to cancel. Yes. And your file will be uploaded to the uh, county assessor's office. And they'll take a little bit of time to review it and confirm everything. And once they've made a determination on your eligibility, uh, they'll contact you and let you know that it's been approved or denied. Or if they need more information, they'll let you know that as well. I'm going to go back to this page again. So this is the property tax uh, application links page on my website. And then just show you if you were going to do a renewal um, on some of these exemptions or they stay with you as long as you own the property like the general homestead and the senior homestead exemption, but some of these need you need to qualify for every year, which would include the senior um, uh, uh, assessment freeze, um, the disabled veterans exemptions. Um, so you would just click on the link, it would take you again to the portal, you click begin filing, and then you go through and you tell it, um, since it's uh, since this is a renewal, you would tell it the specific tax year you're renewing for, and then so on and so on. The rest of the process is very much the same. Just briefly touch on the remaining uh, bullets over here. Um, if you're going to file for a senior citizen's assessment freeze, you would do it here. Now, real quick, on the senior citizen's assessment freeze, uh, there's a common misconception that a, an assessment freeze freezes the property taxes for that resident at the time um, that they qualify. That's, that's not exactly true. What it does is it freezes the value of your home. So if the property tax rate goes up, your property taxes will go up. What won't go up 
is the value of your home. So what a senior freeze protects is it protects senior citizens from increased property taxes as a result of rising values. Um, there's a uh, natural disaster homestead exemption that you can apply for. Um, there is a disaster area application for reassessment. So if you're located in a disaster area and uh, as a result, there's just a, um, a fundamental reduction in the value of the properties as a result of the natural disaster, then this application allows you to be reassessed based on the circumstances. If you own a historic residential property, um, a registered historic property, there's an application that you can go to to uh, have assessments that deal with that. And um, demonstration homes, if you're a builder, a uh, developer, um, um, a uh, multi-building owner that uses a, sing a single tax unit, as a model home to sell other units, there are special exemptions you can get as well, and you would click here for that. Um, that's about it. I want to make one special shout out and thank you to um, one of the residents in my district. Her name is uh, Kimberly Zelinsky. And uh, the, the reason I'm uh, sh uh, making a shout out to Kimberly is. On my last video, she had asked if we can do some closed captioning uh, for the hearing impaired. And I hadn't even thought of that, and I think that was a fantastic idea. Um, so this is the first time I'm using a closed captioning system. It's automatic. It's supposed to be uh, properly uh, transcribing what I'm saying, and I don't know how accurate it is. So I apologize if it's not accurate. Hopefully it's accurate enough to give you at least a, a, a rough idea of what I'm talking about. Um, the other thing I want to mention is on my website, this is a work in progress, but this will always be a work in progress. It's my goal to make this a functional portal for you to come to, to easily find the most common requested items on the county site. Um, I've got up here now, and this has been a very popular um, uh, tool the report issue if you click on the report issue it will give you a list of uh, departments that you can report an issue with for instance the division of transportation very common if there's a pothole a dead animal in the road there's water on pavement a missing or a damaged sign just click the link and it'll take you straight to the Lake County um, report for that department you put in your concern you put the, the details of where it's located, and if you have a file, like a picture you want to include, feel free to choose a file and upload that, click continue, and then that issue will be um, prioritized and entered into a system automatically that can then be distributed to the, um, um, the uh, county staff to have the issue addressed. It also allows us to be able to follow up on issues and then also be able to easily track where our biggest issues are occurring and what issues we should be addressing moving forward. I'll close that. Sorry, this went a little bit long. Um, if you have any more questions, I want you to please feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'm gonna put up uh, my contact information as a reminder of where you can reach me. Uh, of course, always go to my website if you like at www.dickbarlakecounty.com. You can follow me on Twitter at DickBarLCBoard. Um, there's not much to follow because I'm not a good Twitterer. Um, very active on social media, specifically Facebook. And I'm at uh, Dick Bar Lake County. That's at Dick Bar Lake County. Or, of course, the best way to get a hold of me is by email, which is dbarr at lakecountyil.gov. That's dbar at lakecountyil.gov. And if you'd like to subscribe to my newsletter, which comes out every two to three weeks, just text Lake Bar, followed by your email address, to 468311. Again, that's Lake Bar, followed by your email address, texted to 468311. Um, that'll about do it. Um, 
As always, this video was created with no tax dollars, and I'm very happy and proud about that. I'm going to keep doing these videos as long as you want them. If you have something you'd like me to uh, present in a video format, please let me know. And uh, if I can uh, make it happen, I definitely will. So thanks very much. Enjoy your week and have a, have a great evening. Thank mm -hmm. you.